Good morning, students. So this is uh, Jenny. I'm Jenny, ma'am, and I'm going to be teaching you all economic this year. Since this subject is absolutely new to you all, today we will only understand the subject and a few terms. Let's begin. Economics. When, whenever we introduce a new subject or whenever you hear the new term, the first question we all think is what? What is economics? So economics is a social science devoted to the study of how people and societies get what they want. In simpler terms, it is a study of how societies divide and use their resources. Why are they dividing their resources? To produce goods and services. And what are they going to do with these goods and services? They're going to distribute it amongst the consumers. So how are they going to distribute it? All this, when you study all this, it becomes, it's a part of economics. Now we constantly use the word resources. So what are these resources? These resources are the basic ingredients or the basic things that are needed to produce the goods and services that people buy. So we buy soap, we buy soaps, shampoos, food, uh, cars, mobiles, uh, notebooks. So whatever is required to produce this becomes a resource. Now these, res these resources or these ingredients can be either physical or they can be intangible. Physical like uh, land, factory, equipment, etc. And intangible like the intellectual of person, the emotional capacity of a person, uh, all this that goes into the production of goods and services, they all become a resource. Now, so where is the problem? Because you will not study something till you see a problem. So where is the problem? The pro problem is that whether a society is rich or poor, whether it is large or small, uh, according to economics, all the resources are scarce. Scarce meaning? Scarce, the fundamental problem scarcity, what? Scarce means limited. Land, labor, capital, entrepreneurship, they're all limited. But what is unlimited then? Our requirement, our wants, our desires, the amount of food we want to eat, the clothing, the shelter, the security we want, the comfort, the medicine, everything that we want is unlimited. What does that mean? It means that almost everyone in every country like more goods and services. They want to have more and more and more then it can ever be produced. Here is where the problem lies. Given a limited supply of resources and an unlimited desire of individuals, choices must be made. Now, what choices are we talking about here? We are talking about what goods and services to produce, how to produce, and for whom to produce. So we are going to learn this today. In this entire economics, we are always going to learn what to produce, how to produce, for whom to produce. And we are also going to study the behavior of humans of how they make an economic choice when their resources are scarce and their wants and desires are unlimited. So who is an economist? Now, economists study these often difficult choices and their significance. They come up with theories about how such choices are made on both individual and at collective level. They try to make predictions and they find solutions to a wide range of societal problems. So since our society is going through a problem right now, you must be aware that, you know, there are so many predictions being made that, you know, this is going to happen, the US dollar is going to go up, the rupee is going to fall down, or things are going to become more expensive, etc., etc., etc. This is basically uh, predictions by economists. Uh, they are all based on the theories of economists. So I want you to find out the names of five economists and the theories that they have, uh, they are most known for. All right, this is your homework. Okay, uh, we are going to study this, we are going to learn this particular definition of economics by Lionel Robin. Uh, economics is the science which studies human behavior as a relationship between ends and scarce means, which have alternative uses. Now, whenever we study economics, it's always divided into two broad categories. One is microeconomics, one is 
macroeconomics. Micro means small. Uh, microeconomics deals with households, individuals, workers, businesses, how they are making the economic decisions, which, uh, what, how are they using their scarce resources to meet their needs, meet their wants. Uh, when you're studying this, it comes under microeconomics. Basically, it focuses on supply and demand and other forces that determine the price level in the economy. Uh, another one is macroeconomics. Macroeconomics studies the behavior of economy as a whole. Uh, it deals with the big picture like growth, employment and the choices that the bigger groups are making like companies. It also focuses on broad issues such as growth of production, the number of unemployed people, the inflationary increase in prices, government deficits, and the levels of exports and imports. All this falls under the macroeconomics. Now remember, microeconomics and macroeconomics are two different perspectives on economics. The microeconomic perspective focuses on parts of the economy like individual firms and industries, whereas the macroeconomic perspective looks at the economy as a whole focusing on goals like growth in the standard of living, unemployment, and inflation. Another term that we will use a lot is utility, which is a measure of satisfaction an individual gets from the consumption of commodities. Uh, when you give uh, water to someone uh, who's thirsty, and when you give water to someone who is not thirsty, uh, the level of satisfaction differs. Okay, this is measured by utility. In other words, it is a measurement of usefulness that a consumer obtains from any goods. Does it have any utility to you? Do you think you can utilize it? These are the terms we will use. A utility is a measure of how much one enjoys a movie, favorite food and other goods. Utility simply means the ability to satisfy a want. We make choices about how we spend our money, time, energy, so we can fulfill our needs and wants. What are needs and wants? What are needs and wants? Needs are the goods and services we must have to survive generally. Food, shelter and clothing. Wants. Now these are the goods and services we would really like to have. Fancy food, shelter, clothing, big screen TVs, jewelry, conveniences. Also known as luxury. You must remember the difference between these two. Uh, current circumstances, the difference should be clear to you now. What we really need to survive? Food, shelter, clothing, we already have. What we really want? The Starbucks coffee, we want to see that movie, we want to really meet our friends, uh, we really want to go out, we want to travel, all these things. So we should be able to make the differentiation, especially in the current scenarios need versus what. Now all these images that you see on the screen, they will all fulfill the need of a person who is thirsty. But what does that person really need when they are thirsty? They need water, which is easily accessible and available to everyone, which does not even have a high economic price point. But when you look at the other option, you realize that they have, they require more money. So if you if you look only differentiate on the face, uh, on the basis of price, you realize it. Uh, in cer in cer uh, uh, current circumstances, when you're home, you know you're not going to get a cappuccino outside. Uh, mom makes that home. Glad, glad you get that. But I'm just talking of general circumstances where you want it from a particular coffee shop, or you want to have a cold drink, or you want to have a particular mocktail from a particular place. Okay. You need all this only because you are thirsty. But, but it fulfills the same need that a water fulfills. But if you want it, I want that Coca-Cola. I want that lemonade, you know, from a particular place. I want that chocolate chip ice cream from Buxton Robbins. You know, when you want it, oh, this is a want. It is not a need. So if you decide to go and get that chocolate chip ice cream, that means you've taken a decision of spending that amount of money on that ice cream. 
So money is again a resource you have. You've decided to use a little bit of that resource to get this uh, happiness or satisfaction out of that ice cream. So we are constantly making decisions between our wants, but we do forget our need. We do forget what we actually need. As resources are scarce and desires unlimited, Choices must be made about what goods and services to produce, how to produce them, and for whom to produce them. Because, for, so let's say in current circumstances, we already have Louis Vuitton, which is making masks. We have a Ford, which is making ventilators. Why do you think this change happened? This change happened because uh, suddenly the demand for these uh, goods have risen. Uh, okay, we are not going to be studying demand and supply right now, but I'm wanting to really uh, put a point here that is choices are made about what goods and services to produce. So they made a decision what they wanted to produce. They figured out how to produce them. And they also know for whom we are producing. Like uh, Narendra Modi said in his speech, we are already currently making masks and we are going to be, uh, we are going to supply it already in the international market. So this decision has been made for the country. So this falls in macro now, when you're producing something, we need, we have four factors of production, land, labor, capital, and entrepreneurship. Uh, anything that we want to produce, we need these four things with us, only then we can produce it. Now, when you're producing the goods, remember these goods can be capital goods or consumer goods. Now, consumer goods are basically goods that have no future productive use, uh, they are directly bought by a customer, the customer will enjoy it. It's like the full and the final product. Capital goods are goods that help other businesses to make consumer goods. So machinery, uh, all the machinery that is uh, supplied in a factory is a capital, is a capital good because these uh, goods will help us make a consumer good, which is the finished product, which is the car. Consumer goods include food, appliances, clothes, and automobiles. And capital goods include items like buildings, machineries, and tools. Now, there are two types of activities, economic activity and non-economic activity. Economic activities are those activities of a man which are undertaken for earning money. And non-economic activities are those activities that are not undertaken for any monetary gain. So, if you're making a TikTok video, it is a non-economic activity. You're not really earning anything out of it. But if you know the TikTok stars, the big ones, or if you know the actors and actresses, of course you all know them. So when you look at them, they are do using the same talent, acting or you know entertainment for monetary gain. So that becomes an economic activity. Whereas uh, you making a video for entertainment at home is a non-economic activity. All activities can be non-economic as well as economic. Uh, when uh, when an artist is singing for his own pleasure or an artist is singing uh, in front of an audience, that is the difference between economic and non-economic activity. Economic activities lead to an increase in personal income of the individual. Non-economic activities do not increase the personal income of an individual. Economic activities contribute to the flow of goods and services in the economy. Non-economic activities do not contribute to the flow of goods and services in an economic. Uh, economic activities add value to the national income and non-economic activities do not add value to the national income. This is the basic difference between the two. Just to summarize what we have studied today, that also means this is the end of the lesson now, is economic studies, the man's behavior concerned with bringing about a balance between multiple wants and limited means in such a manner that maximum satisfaction can be obtained. Economics can be understood better from the study of economic problems. Economic problems arise due to scarcity of resources in comparison to multiple wants of people. Scarcity in a situation where we have unlimited wants but limited resources. Human wants are unlimited and productive resources such as land, labor, natural resources, raw materials, 
capital equipment and capital. This gives rise to the problem of choice. That is how to use cash resources to attain maximum satisfaction. So now that you have understood what subject we will be studying, I want you all to do a, something for me in your notebook. I want you all to make a notebook for economics. I want you all to take the first page and decorate it or color it, not the cover page, the first page of your notebook. I want you all to uh, draw and color uh, your understanding of economics. What you think is economics about? What have you understood? Okay, and on the next page, I want you all to write the title and date and solve some questions for me. Okay, so um, these are a few questions I want you all to answer. What is economics? Which are the branches of economics? What is utility? Explain wants and needs with an example. What is investment? Differentiate between economic and non economic activity. What is production? What are the factors of production? And differentiate between consumer goods and capital goods. The only question over here, which I have not covered in this lesson, is what is investment? I want you all to uh, find an easy and simple explanation for it and write it down in your own words. All right. I want you to complete this work before our next lesson because now we are going to be really studying of an economic problem. We are going to learn about a village. We are, I, I'll leave that explanation for the next lesson. So I just want you all to complete this work before our next lesson. Hope you all are having a wonderful day. Take care, stay home, stay safe.